thanks for joining this live broadcast where we are going to be doing a test live to see if we are going to start doing evening classes. So this is our first run of this ever on Facebook Live. So we want to see how many uh, interactions we can get with you guys and how many, pe how many more people are able to attend in the evening as opposed to the standard uh, 12 o'clock on Thursdays. So please comment in and see. It, uh, let us know if this is a better time for you. Hi, Mike. Jennifer and Arthur, uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, love seeing where you guys are from. Hopefully we'll be able to get some more West, Pe West Coast people on live with us tonight. Um, we are going to be talking about all things heat transfer vinyl. So one common question we always get from you guys, whether it's on our live broadcasts or in person at trade shows and in seminars, is what to use when. So most common question we want to answer here today in regards to heat transfer vinyl. So we are going to uh, break it up into three buckets. We're going to be talking about basic heat transfer vinyl, performance heat transfer vinyl, and also special effect. And of course, if you were, uh, if you caught some of the promotions throughout the week that um, where I was going on live and discussing the live class, we're going to be talking about how you can price these heat transfer vinyl jobs. I can get a little bit long-winded during these, so if you guys have any questions, just feel free to comment those in throughout the broadcast. I see a lot of comments coming in. Thank you, guys. Uh, people from Kansas, Texas. We got some people in California. Awesome. Tasha, great. This is great being on the West Coast. Always miss the lives. Awesome. So glad you were able to make one today. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about basic heat transfer vinyl. And I have two um, most common uh, heat transfer vinyls that are talked a lot in the industry is a basic heat transfer vinyl. So we're gonna be talking about fashion film and we're gonna be applying that first. So fashion film is your most common heat transfer vinyl used in the industry. It's really known for just applying to your basic t-shirts. It's great for cotton, cotton poly blends. It applies at 320 degrees, so we do want to be careful whenever we're considering the substrate we're applying this to. I have a 100% um, cotton t-shirt here that we're going to be applying because that is going to be an ideal substrate for this particular product. So fashion film applies at 320 degrees. I'm going to be applying everything using the Hotronics Fusion uh, and this is a really popular heat press in the industry because as you can see it has the draw feature. It also has the swing feature whenever it's not locked in place. So there's a little pin back here that locks it in place. So it does swing open. So what's nice about this heat press and why people, um, this is pretty much their goal in a heat press, is a heat-free layout. Also, there's a lot of area underneath the fusion that allows me to thread on all of my garments or accessories so that I'm able to get the best pressure that I can for my application. All right, so now you can see that I've threaded that on. I'm only working with one surface of the garment so that I can, I don't have any pressure issues. My collar's falling off of the front of the platen and the seams of my sleeves are doing the same. So now I'm working with one flat surface. I'm gonna do a preheat to release any moisture and wrinkles in the garment. Three to, five sec three to five seconds just about does it for the preheat. That should be long enough. If you are working with a garment, um, a lot of 100% cottons have a tendency to hold moisture a lot longer. If you notice that there's still steam coming out from the heat press whenever you are applying cotton, just attack it for an additional three to five seconds to release all that moisture. All right, so fashion film has a nice tacky carrier, all right? So um, this product is really great for fine detail and being able to achieve very small text, all right? That tacky carrier on there is uh, going to hold any small detail down while I'm weeding away so that I know that I can get a nice, um, a, a nice fine print and also a durable application. It's 88 microns thick, so it's going to be a soft and lightweight feel on the garment. It applies at 320 degrees for 15 to 20 seconds at a medium pressure. All right. Fashion film is also a hot peel. And that allows us to uh, not only speed up production while we're pressing a lot of shirts, 
but also helps a lot for the tacking method. All right, the tacking method, all right, it's, I'm going to go ahead and peel that back. The tacking method is um, a process where if you're going to be working with multiple colors in a design, such as the one that I selected from our show and tell, I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and bring up on the screen. All right, so this it was made out of fashion film, and you can tack this in multiple layers. Why people use this for the tacking me method mostly is because um, it is still a lightweight product, so when it's being layered, it doesn't feel practically bulletproof on a t-shirt. All right, so as you can see from uh, the multiple uh, colors in this design, um, that this was tacked um, and layered multiple times. Now, Joe, this was submitted, um, I'm sorry, this was submitted through the show and tell. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the name, um, but thank you for submitting that. If you guys do want to submit your designs uh, so that we can feature them on any of our lives, you can submit that every Saturday through our show and tell. All right, so back to the fashion film. We're gonna go um, back to this so that we can uh, talk about pricing. All right, so I went ahead and priced this as a one-piece job, and you'll be able to see that on the screen here. All right, so CAD Cut Fashion Film Profit Potential. So as I mentioned, we are putting this on 100% cotton, all right, and we're using a single color design. So our blank cost for the Gildan t-shirt was $1.98. My transfer cost is 45 cents. Labor and overhead is 83 cents. Cost to produce for the garment, my labor and overhead transfer cost is $3.26. All right, so I'm gonna sell this shirt. At a high end, it would be around $15. At a low end, it would be around 12. So either way, I'm able to get a decent profit out of this garment. But let me walk you through how we were able to get this price so that you guys can understand that this is something you can achieve in your shop so that you are best pricing your job. So not only are you paying yourself for the amount of labor that you're putting into it, but also getting the most profit out of a nice quality t-shirt. All right, so I have our heat transfer vinyl cost calculator brought up on the screen here. And we're gonna start at step one, where it talks about the shop info. So I'm gonna zoom in here. All right, so we wanna go to shop info first. So you are going to have to decide at what percent uh, percentage uh, you are going to do your overhead. All right, so this typically ranges between 15% to 25%. I know some customers from just talking with different people at trade shows will sometimes even go as high as 35%. But this is how much you are going to pay yourself um, for your overhead, all right? So I do a happy medium, I just do 15% in there. And then at what rate are you going to pay your um, employees or yourself for the heating and weeding process? All right, so I just put a standard $10 in each of those for an hourly rate, and then that completes step one. Step two is job info, right? So this is the total numbers of designs cut per garment, All right? So again, I'm that pricing that I showed is based off of one piece. So I'm going to um, just put in one design, right? Because so we just did a single color, the LHS Mustangs. Then we need to consider how much time it took us to weed and heat apply that particular piece. All right, so it was a six or a 10 by four design. So it took me uh, roughly two minutes to weed that and less than a minute to heat apply it because it was only a 15 to 20 second application. All I had to do was thread it on real quick. So I'm gonna put about a half a minute for my heat application. All right, my blank uh, garment cost, you definitely want to fill in this piece every time because this is going to change your overhead. So anytime uh, you have a new garment cost, make sure you're always filling that in. So we are at $1.98 for that. And then again, we're only pricing for one shirt. However, this is where you'll consider how many pieces you're getting a request for. 
All right, so I do see some comments coming in, and Melissa asked if we can link the spreadsheet, please. So I guess this would be a good time to bring up the QR code that will directly link you to the heat transfer vinyl cost calculator for you to download. All right, you can either follow the bit.ly link that was just added into the comments, or you can scan this QR code with your smartphone. All right, so just bring up the camera app on any smartphone that you have. You don't have to take a picture of it, of it or anything, just let it hold there, and it will uh, prompt you to follow a link so it will notify you. Um, and Joe just looked up for me who submitted the um, baby shark design. That was Andy uh, from Minnesota. So thank you, Andy, for submitting that. We really appreciate it. All right, so let's go ahead back to the cost calculator. All right, so now we need to figure out um, the design size info because that's going to tell us how much material um, that we used in order to produce this. All right, so what I'm going to bring up now is CAD Works Live, where I created my design. So I'm going to open up that piece of artwork. Select both pieces. I know that it was a 10-inch design, but I do want to double check my height. So we're at 10 by 4, and I'm just going to round it up to a half. All right, so I go, I'm going to go back to my cost calculator and type that in. So my width was 10 and my length was four and a half. All right, so now I'm going to scroll over to the right hand side of my Excel sheet here and it's going to list all of the CAD cut heat transfer vinyl. All right, so we used fashion film here. It went ahead and gave me my material cost for those exact, exact dimensions. My heat press cost, how much time I spent at the heat press. Also, how much time I spent weeding. My overhead for um, the percentage that I put in and also for the garment cost. The actual garment cost and then the total piece cost. All right, so we are at $3.41. At this point, you will know um, what is the best price for you to give based off of the customer, customer base that you are serving. If you're doing fanware a lot or uh, you're involved with a lot of schools, you pretty much know what they're willing to pay for a t-shirt and what they're not willing. This is a very low-end garment. Uh, a basic gilded t-shirt doesn't typically cost any more than $2. Uh, so we're keeping our costs low by choosing a low cost garment, which is going to help us in being able to achieve a higher profitability. Now, um, $15 is usually the higher end for a basic cotton t-shirt with single color. You can go as low as 12, uh, but again, it's always going to be based off of how your customer base and you know them best. So you know how to price things based off of that. How I price things is I go based off of what people are selling them online, such as Etsy, even if they're doing shoppable Instagram or marketing on Facebook. So I just do basic research to kind of find a uh, general um, price that is also competitive so that you're able to uh, offer a good price and not steer somebody else such as a competitor. Okay, so that's fashion film. So fashion film, again, is best for your basic cotton t-shirt application. So it's going to be great for 100% cotton and, one, and cotton poly blends. Right. Then we get into basic heat transfer vinyl that has a different adhesive that we can use for sensitive garments such as nylon. All right, so we do have a specific heat transfer vinyl that is great for applying on nylon and it is known as Gorilla Grip 2. So you may have seen this on the website and just not known what it was for, but this is the adhesive that we offer that sticks only to nylon, all right? So if you have requests from your customers to apply to nylon, Gorilla Grip 2 is gonna be the heat transfer vinyl for you to offer your customers. All right, so I have the 16 by 20 loaded on here and we're gonna be applying a left chest logo. So I'm going to remove the 16 by 20 here and drop in my 6 by 10 platen. Right, as I mentioned earlier, the Fusion is all about having a 
heat free layout and being able to thread on garments. And that is why they, we have so many interchangeable platens that are compatible with this heat press because it has a nice large footprint where we can load different accessories or uh, garments on here without uh, risking um, anything getting in the way of pressure or damaging our transfer. So as you can see, we do have buttons here that we want to make sure are falling off of the platen, but there's also a seam on the inside that if I were to just lay that flat, it would cause this to um, start to make a score mark through the garment because nylon is very sensitive with heat. So we want to make sure that we're removing that before it creates an indent on the front of the garment. Gorilla Grip applies at 320 degrees. I'm gonna get locked in place here. And just as a general rule of thumb for a left chest logo, I find the outside of the seam here and I drop about six inches down from there and I go center of where that seam is. So I'm gonna try to line up my M center of that seam. Cover with my cover sheet. Now, Gorilla Grip does not have a tacky carrier, so we do want to be careful about how much detail we are using for that logo. Also, if you um, are used to working with tacky carriers and placing those on your garment so that it doesn't move as you're shifting the garment around, uh, because it doesn't have that tacky carrier, you can use an accessory known as thermotape. Right, so it is a tape that is um, good for putting under high heat. So that if you were worried about this moving around and shifting whenever you're putting your uh, cover sheet over top, then that would keep it in place. Right, this is a cold peel, so we're going to wait for this to cool down. I speed up this process by just placing it on a cold surface. And then I can weed away my design. All right, and that is the simple application for Gorilla Grip. All right, Gorilla Grip, again, it's great for nylons, but be careful if you're working with um, water resistant uh, nylons, all right? Because if there is a water resistant coating on here, then you want to make sure you're utilizing denatured alcohol so that you are rubbing that um, coating off or else that adhesive is not going to stick. All right, so be sure that whenever you're using Gorilla Grip and you are using nylon that could be waterproof or water resistant, just be sure that there's not a coating on there or it will still fall off. Again, that coating can be removed with denatured alcohol so that the adhesive will still apply. That's not gonna damage the garment or anything um, because it's not going to um, like get rid of the color. Or no dyes are gonna start coming out from that. Denatured alcohol is very good with fabric, so it's just to remove that coating. A little fun fact, with denatured alcohol removing that coating, um, at that point, you can't actually sell the garment as a waterproof because you did remove a little bit of that coating um, where it could potentially let water still come through the fabric. However, that waterproof coating typically comes off in about three washes. So if you're worried about your customer not purchasing at that point, just let them know that it's gonna come off, that coating's gonna come off in the wash anyway. Okay, let's answer some questions. All right, so the top of the design start at the six, six inch spot. Correct, Denise. So if you are measuring exactly six inches down, that's where you want the top of your design to begin. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and show the pricing on the Gorilla Grip 2 um, cost to produce with the garment. So the garment was sourced from Bella Canvas. This is a little more of a higher end garment um, and it is priced at $17.49. Bella Canvas is available through SNS Activewear and also Sanmar. So if you're looking to purchase uh, Bella Canvas, um, then you can find th them through those suppliers for wholesale pricing. All right, our transfer cost comes in at 19 cents and our labor, labor and overhead at $3.92. So you can see where our labor and overhead jumped 
based off of the price of our garment because we're still taking that into consideration. All right, so our cost to produce for that is $21.60, and we're gonna sell this at $32. We're able to do this because one, we're printing a higher end brand. Bella Canvas is very known in the industry and very sought after. So we're able to offer a little bit more than that also because it is waterproof. So if we're doing this for a track and field team, they're going to be out in uh, rainy weather. They're gonna want that. And then also the nylon is just a natural uh, type of heat or substrate that is going to keep any, um, uh, it's just good for outdoor weather, all right? So our customers are gonna be willing to pay a little bit more for a higher end garment because they're getting something more out of it. We're gonna keep the cost low with the transfer so that our profit isn't, or not our profit, but our cost to produce isn't skyrocketing. So we kept our transfer cost low at just 19 cents. So we were able to uh, get a decent profit out of that and still keep the price pretty low. All right, next we have a, uh, we're gonna move into our performance heat transfer vinyl. So to recap the basic heat transfer vinyl bucket, we had our fashion film that's great for 100% cotton and cotton poly blends. Then we had Gorilla Grip too, that is great for nylons. All right, now we're gonna move into the performance bucket. So heat transfer vinyl that is great for performance wear and is great for moisture, moisture wicking and very um, heat sensitive substrates. So our first application, of course, is going to be 100% polyester. And you can probably guess what product we're gonna be using, and that is Premium Plus High Tack. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and load on the 100% polyester t-shirt. Going to drop back in my 16 by 20 platen. And again, we're gonna thread the garment so that we're working with just one surface of it. Preheat to release any moisture or wrinkles, and since we did load in a new platen, we want to test our pressure. All right, with polyester, because it is such a heat sensitive fabric, there are three things you wanna take into consideration. What temperature am I going to put this um, heat on at and apply my transfer with? What time, so I don't want my t-shirt to also be under that high heat for a long dwell time. And also, I don't want my pressure to be too heavy because then I can get a, a heat printing box on the edges of where my t-shirt is laying on the platen. All right, so we're gonna be doing a two color design specifically because I do wanna show you how pricing can range based off of how many colors you're also including in your artwork. So, a two color design for Premium Plus, our first step is to take the largest piece of our design and apply that first. All right, I go about three inches down, which for me is about four fingers. Going to grab my cover sheet. And all we have to do is tack for five seconds. So Premium Plus High Tack is another heat transfer vinyl that you can use the tacking method with. I usually go at the five second mark. And then whenever I am peeling the carrier away for this product, I make sure to go nice and slow. It is a hot peel, so I can start peeling that immediately after applying. But the reason I'm gonna go nice and slow is because this material has a four-way stretch, which is great for performance wear, especially 100% polyester, because it does have a lot of stretch to it. But if I am layering another color in here and I tear this carrier too fast, it could potentially distort the image and not allow my next piece of the design to line up properly. So it could potentially distort it enough where this doesn't line up right. So I wanna go nice and slow so that it's not stretching too much because it's still hot. All right, so my design lined up great. 
Now I'm still going to tack this, all right? I could go ahead and apply for the full application now, but I don't wanna do that because my Mylar carrier that my Premium Plus is on could leave um, indents in the white transfer that's already down, all right? So just enough pressure will cause this carrier to create marks in the first layer. So I wanna make sure I'm just tacking this for five seconds and then I'll go back and apply for the full application. All right, this is the metallic silver being paired with the white. So Premium Plus does come in a few metallic colors. If you were looking for a little bit of special effect with a nice performance heat transfer. All right, and now we'll apply for the full application. So to sum up Premium Plus, it applies at a low temperature of 280 degrees, and it is a four-way stretch product. So whenever I let this cool enough, I'm going to be able to stretch this, and my heat transfer vinyl isn't going to crack at all. All right, so this is the finished garment. Whoops. And you can see, since we applied at a nice low temperature, I don't have any scorching or melting on the 100% um, polyester substrate. All right, so that is why Premium Plus is so game-changing for a lot of you who are printing um, heat-sensitive fabrics. And there are a lot of different substrates out there that are sensitive to heat. Um, and a lot of tri-blends that incorporate cotton, poly, and rayon, and any poly spandex mixes. All right, so this should be cool enough now to be able to stretch so that you can see that this has a lot of give to it and a lot of rebound so that there's no cracking or distorting of the image while I'm stretching. And it is a four-way stretch, so I can stretch it whichever way and it's not going to crack or start peeling off. Now, Premium Plus is also tested for 50 washes, so you don't have to worry about a customer coming back with the product falling off as long as you are following those application instructions. All right, and that goes for every heat transfer vinyl that we've done so far. So the Fashion Film, the Gorilla Grip, and the Premium Plus all tested for 50 washes. All right, so we'll go ahead and bring up the pricing for Premium Plus. All right, so our blank cost this blank was sourced from Sanmar. It's a sport tech brand. It's only $3.99. Our transfer cost, you'll notice, um, is $0.96. Cents, all right, so that's a little bit of jump from the other two prices that we've seen so far. And that's because we are using a two color. And it's a fairly large design. We're looking at about eight inches in width. All right, so our cost to produce for um, the t-shirt and the design is $7.99. And you can sell this type of fan wear because it is a um, performance wear type of fabric. It's moisture wicking, so people are a little more willing to pay uh, more for a nicer t-shirt. It's a soft feel and it feels very nice on the garment. All right, so we're looking at $10.01 of profit. Now let's go in back into the um, cost calculator here so that we can pr show how you can price uh, a two color job. All right, so we did two color premium plus. So we're gonna pay attention to this pricing right over here. I'm gonna keep everything the same. We're gonna change the total number of cut designs per garment to two since we did two colors. Time to weed and mass two. We can probably double this. And then I'm going to do about a minute and a half for heat pressing, just because you want to be careful whenever you're weeding that. And then our t-shirt design, or our t-shirt cost uh, changed from 198. And I'm going to have Joe bring up that slide again, because I cannot remember the garment cost. All right, so 399. All right, so we're going to change that to 399. And we're going to just price one garment. All right, so now we need to figure out the design info for both pieces, all right? We can't just leave it in as one. We have to do the first placement and the second placement. So we'll bring up our design in CADWorks Live. Get rid of my T-shirt here. And I can't see my white now, so I'm gonna change this color so I can see it, okay. All right, so 
I'm going to hover over both. All right, so my width of my design was eight inches and my height is 729. So right now we're going to put in the dimension sizes of the white heat transfer vinyl there. So we'll go back. So we're at eight and seven point, and I'm just gonna round that up to three. Right, now we need to get the measurements for our second color. So I'm going to just select that color in CAD Works, and then at the top, this is where I'm getting my dimensions right here, for those of you who aren't familiar with CAD Works Live. We're at 6.07 and 4.77, so I'm just gonna do six by five, just to round up. Okay, so premium plus you can see here, 95 cents. So it is calculating both pieces. Um, of course, premium plus, whether it was the matte white or the silver metallic is the same price. They don't change just because it's a different color. So the pricing is going to be the same for both pieces. So we're looking at 95 cents. And then you can see our heat press costs and weeding costs and our overhead costs varied because we changed this job information over here, we updated it with the proper um, information. All right, so that is how you price a two color job. And that was premium plus. All right, so that was the first heat transfer vinyl in our performance bucket. All right, so premium plus, thin, lightweight, very soft and silky smooth on the garment, which makes it perfect for your 100% polyesters in any type of moisture wicking, lightweight material that is meant for active or performance wear. All right, so our next heat transfer vinyl in that performance bucket is thermofilm. All right, so you can see I've applied the back of my jersey here. All right, and thermofilm is really known for contact sports. This product is great because not only is it abrasion resistant, so if there is a helmet hitting the transfer or cleats hitting the transfer, it's not gonna crack or peel or start to fall off of that garment at all. But it's also inhibiting dye migration. So whenever you're working with 100% polyester mesh that is dyed to achieve its color, it starts to migrate whenever it's exposed to high heat. So thermofilm is actually keeping that dye from migrating through and changing your whites to pinks or anything else, all right? So if it's maroon, it would probably change to a light brown or something like that. So we are using thermofilm to keep our, our whites from turning to a different color because of dye migration, all right? So that inhibits dyes. Thermofilm is available in rolled goods but it is also available in pre-cuts, like a lot of our other heat transfer vinyl is. But thermofilm is unique because it doesn't come with a carrier whenever you're ordering pre-cuts. This is the best way to order numbers for jerseys because at this point, you're not paying for waste, all right? So if you are going to do names and numbers for jerseys, the most cost-effective way to do that is to cut out the names on a vinyl cutter and then apply the pre-cut numbers because we're taking care of the waste for you. We've already cut it out for you. You can order these in packs or kits so that you're getting the most for what you're paying for. And it's an easy application. So we'll head over to the heat press and show you the application on the front of the jersey. Now, I, if any customer tells me that they're planning to use their heat press for a, for uh, printing jerseys, I always recommend a heat press that is going to be threadable because you have to be able to thread the jersey because of the mesh. All right, so this is a still mesh jersey. It's sourced from Teamwork Athletic, but anytime you're working with mesh and heat transfer vinyl, that adhesive is gonna start sinking through the mesh and sticking to whatever is underneath the jersey. All right, so these platen covers come into um, a really good benefit at this point because as that adhesive is sinking through the mesh, it's actually sticking to this, but this is a non-stick surface, so it's gonna lift right up and it'll be fine from there. All right, so if you are planning to print jer mesh, mesh jerseys, you definitely want to have it threadable and you want to have a non-stick carrier. 
All right, so we're going to place our first number And as you can see, there isn't a carrier here. And I also risk not knowing if I am adhesive side down or up. All right, so there's always a chance that I could risk pressing it this way. And this actually sticking up to my heating element. This is a really common heat printing mistake, especially if you're working with um, pre-cut numbers and letters. So always make sure you are using your cover sheet so that you don't risk that sticking to the heating element if you do happen to have it upside down. Now you'll be able to tell the difference with thermofilm because thermofilm has a bit of a texture to it. So you'll be able to tell between the adhesive side and the thermofilm side. Now there's always that risk that you're doing so many at a time that you don't actually realize you have it upside down. If you haven't done it, I'm sure you will eventually. One of the most common mistakes in heat printing when working with pre-cuts. All right, so I did a um, quick tack for that first layer, and now I'm going to apply my second layer. All right, and that's going to get the full application. So thermofilm applies at 330 degrees for 15 to 20 seconds. Now if you were working with thermofilm that you had cut out and it still had that carrier on there, it is a hot peel. So if you were uh, working with that carrier, you would be able to peel that off. All right. Another thing that that cover sheet did for us was allow this dye migration or the dyes in this jersey to not migrate up to my upper heating element. So that's another key thing if you're working with garment dyes or even sublimation dyes to utilize that cover sheet so that nothing's transferring up to your upper heating element because you never know if that could transfer back onto another job that you might be doing later. Right, so you can see that no dyes are migrating through this and we have a nice completed jersey. If you're looking to get into printing jerseys for local schools or you're contracting out for any um, colleges, we do have a um, team player guide that um, gives you all of the guidelines for any type of sport that you might be printing for because there are certain heights um, and sizes of the text and even certain fonts that you can and cannot use. So if you are looking to get into printing jerseys, definitely download that. It's a free download um, and it definitely utilize it because it has all the information that you need. Okay, so performance bucket, our heat transfer vinyl for performance. We did our premium plus high tack, which is great for performance wear, 100% polys. And then we have the thermofilm, which is great for contact sports so that we are um, having abrasion resistance and blocking dye migration. Do see some comments coming in, so we're gonna scroll through those and answer any questions. Tabitha asks, if you don't have a threadable heat press, could you put a Teflon sheet in the shirt to keep it from sticking to the back? Tabitha, you definitely could use a Teflon sheet, but we also have other heat printing accessories known as heat printing pillows that you would probably find more beneficial because it would be definitely easier to thread in and it actually has a non-stick cover over that pillow that will keep that from happening as well. If you are interested in finding those, uh, you can find them on the website um, under heat printing accessories. Mariana asks, uh, what's the shelf life of the pre-cut numbers? Um, so they do come in a pack, or if you're ordering the kit, they will come in a box. As long as you're keeping them in the pack or in the box that it comes with, they have a shelf life of three to five years, especially if it's in a room uh, temperature um, type of atmosphere, not near a window or anything getting too hot because we don't want to risk that adhesive activating at all. So definitely keep them stored properly and you'll be able to store them for a long time. 
All right, Alexis asked, a 60-40 cotton poly has some stretch. Is fashion film the best choice? Also, do you recommend not using tri-blends for shirts? Alexis, thanks for the question. All right, so 60-40 cotton poly. Definitely depends on what's the 60 and what's the 40. If it's 40% polyester, then I would still recommend fashion film. If you find that it's scorching at 320 degrees, I would test it with premium plus high tack as well. 320 versus 280. So that's a big temperature jump and one might be better uh, than the other. Fashion film does have a little bit of give to it. So if you're noticing um, that the shirt is a little stretchy, fashion film isn't gonna crack and peel at that point. It's only if you're printing something that is going to be um, a tight fit where it's going to be stretching all day long. All right, so Premium Plus will be better for that. Uh, Tri-blends are still a great um, type of substrate. They feel great. It's what we're seeing mainly in retail. So it's what your customers are probably going to be requesting. Uh, I wouldn't want you to turn away those jobs. So I would find what is going to be best for the type of job that you are uh, looking to fulfill. So premium plus, again, that low 280 degree works great on tri-blends that incorporate rayon or modal. Um, so utilize what you can. There are other accessories that um, go beyond the realm of just heat transfer vinyl that do help with scorching when working with tri-blends. Uh, those are called the power platens and they're compatible with a um, auto clam style of heat press. So if you're interested in uh, checking those out to avoid scorching, you can uh, visit that on the stalls.com website under our heat print accessories. Okay. Looks like we have all of the questions asked, uh, answered. How do you prevent the first color from shrinking? Okay, so good question, Lisa. Um, if you are trying to avoid shrinking of your heat transfer vinyl, then you want to use the tacking method. So um, earlier uh, we talked about tacking a fashion film if you're gonna be doing two color uh, applications. At that point, you would just tack for three to five seconds the first layer and so on and so forth until you get the last layer um, and doing the full application then so you know that it's a nice durable finish. All right, so that is the athletic or the performance. Now we're getting into special effect, and this is our last bucket, uh, but I really wanted you to understand the difference between the basic and the athletic so you know what to utilize when. Now for our special effect, our most common is glitter flake. All right, so we're gonna be applying a two color glitter flake design where we did a trapping method to make it look as if it's layered because you cannot layer glitter flake, but you can definitely make it look like it was layered. Before we move on, Joe has reminded me that I did not show you the pricing for the jersey, so we'll go ahead and bring that up now. And as I'm loading on my other platen, you guys can check that out. Now you'll notice that our transfer costs did increase there significantly because of all the different placements that we have on the jersey, and for each one of those placements, we have two colors. All right, so just because we have the uh, print cut, or not print cut, the pre-cut um, numbers on there, that is not what is making that trans or that price jump. It is um, all of the different locations on the jersey that were printed and the um, amount of colors. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to the two color glitter flake. All right, so I'm gonna be using a Rabbit Skins onesie. All right, what's nice about Glitter Flake is that it is CPSIA compliant, just like all of our other heat transfer vinyl. That just means it's safe for children, so if they happen to um, start chewing on their shirt or something like that, they're not going to uh, risk any harm. All right, so we wanna make sure that this seam, because this is a vintage jersey uh, type of onesie, we wanna make sure this seam is falling off right there so we have a nice flat surface. I always recommend the six by 10 for doing onesies. Doing a preheat to release moisture and wrinkles. 
a common thing that you will see with um, doing 100% cotton, in some instances, there's a chance um, that it will start to change. So you can see that the color is changing a little bit. It's looking more of like a darker shade. That will come out, so that's not scorching. All right, 100% cotton um, typically does not scorch. So if you see a darker shade coming from the heat where you pressed it, that will go away as the air starts to hit that. Glitter Flake is a hot peel and it is compatible with the tacking process. So we are attacking the first layer for three to five seconds and then peeling that carrier back hot. And now we can go in with our next layer. Looks like I'm gonna be very close to the edges of this platen with this final piece. Gonna try to make it work though. Looks like I made, just made it. All right, so this tacking method, this is done in your artwork process. All right, so basically what we're doing is creating a contour that is trapping the inside of our design to make, make it look as if the glitter flake is layered, even though it is not, it is being applied to the fabric as a separate piece. Right. And again, this is a hot peel. I did that last application for the full time and temperature, so I know that my design is at a durable application and is complete. Right, so we can peel that back. Right. So again, the mark that you're seeing there, the dark shade that will fade as the air hits that. I'm sure you guys have experienced this with 100% cotton, right? But glitter flake, it is known for the effect that it gives whenever it's applied to um, apparel and accessories because of that high glitter sparkle that it shows. It really pops off of the garment and it has a nice true glitter texture and it doesn't rub off on your hand so you won't have any glitter um, getting onto anything else after this is applied. All right, so it's not typically what you see um, in retail. Usually they're using a screen print process and the glitter likes to flake off and fall and stick to everything, but this does not have that problem at all. So no glitter rubs off. So Glitter Flake is a very high-end, profitable heat transfer vinyl. So if you can incorporate this into the designs that you're offering your customers, you will be able to um, increase profit because people are willing to pay more for this because it's a different, unique finish. All right, so let's go ahead and check pricing with that. <clears throat> All right, so you can see here that our blank cost is $480. All right, so if you are looking to um, keep a um, less, a sh how do I word this? <laughs> if you're looking to sell this at a lower price, there we go. It's getting late in the day. I'm not used to these APM classes. <laughs> All right, so um, just consider the garment that you are applying to. There are onesies out there that go for less than a dollar. So if you're looking to sell this at a lower price, so say you're selling on Etsy, for instance, um, it can be very competitive for glitter onesies on Etsy. It seems like everybody is offering those on Etsy now. So just keep that in mind um, that the onesie is definitely increasing our cost to produce here. So if you want to be able to offer this at a more competitive, uh, competitive price, that you would want to go with a cheaper blank, but still be able to offer that glitter finish because that is going to be competitive for you. All right, but you can see there our transfer cost is $1.57 because we did two color glitter flake. Uh, so our labor and overhead is $2.68. We're going to sell this for $18, leaving us with a profit of $8.95. Just keep that in mind uh, that you can manipulate these however you see fit. Um, being able to swap in and out uh, different price ranges to get exactly at the sell price that you want to. All right, uh, Alexis asks, is the glitter flake super thick? How does it feel on the garment? Thank you for the previous answer. You are welcome. All right, so glitter flake, um, it definitely 
feels thicker than most heat transfer vinyl. So for instance, we've been applying regular flat matte heat transfer vinyl that typically ranges from 88 microns to 110 microns thickness. This is going to be uh, close to 200 microns. So it is a little bit thicker, but it's still nice and comfortable. It's nothing that is going to feel too thick on the inside, so it doesn't feel like a patch or anything. It's still very fashionable, so um, it's going to feel still kind of lighter than most. All right, so Etsy is highly competitive, yes. All right, does it matter which you apply first? All right, so for this one, I applied the gold first just because I wanted to, uh, and actually, I could have applied the white first so that I could get my alignment a little better um, with that seam there. However, I applied the gold first just because that was the inside part and then I did the outside, but it doesn't really matter because both would have worked just as easily. Okay, looks like we have uh, all the questions answered. All right, cool. All right, so I did mention in uh, a live from earlier that we were going to sneak peek a new product that we are launching tomorrow. So we're gonna go ahead with that. And this is a special effect product. So this does fall in the special effect category and it is our chalkboard heat transfer vinyl. All right, so this heat transfer vinyl is compatible with all um, vinyl cutting machines, all right? So this is um, great for Cricut, Silhouette, even your industry grade cutters such as the Graph Tech or Roland, right? It's very easy to weed and very easy to work with. All right, so I applied this at 275 degrees and it applied for 15 seconds at a medium pressure. All right, so nothing crazy, nothing too high of heat. I applied it on a fashion tee by Cavio, so it's one of their cold shoulder long sleeve t-shirts. And this is going to be very unique and very niche specific. So if you have customers that are uh, very creative with their designs and some of the things that they have you custom print for them, I would definitely get this in and sample the product and show them what they can do with this product. It goes beyond just fashion. Um, we're seeing businesses use it on aprons so that uh, they can write in um, their special of the day or their soup of the day. So just think about um, what type of customers that you can market this to because this is such a unique product and can be very profitable for you. All right, so it comes in a 12 inch roll. All right, so this is gonna be available online tomorrow morning. So make sure you grab this up quick. It's available in a 12 inch roll, so great for those of you that are using your uh, Brother Scanning Cuts or Crickets or Silhouettes, so you don't have to trim down the sides at all. Um, and then also, still great for your Roland and Graph Tech users, because all you have to do is adjust your pinch rollers a little bit. All right, so Bethany asked the H in the Bullhogs, Bulldogs design, uh, was that a font or a template? Um, you know, I created that design so long ago, so I will get back to you on that question. Um, Bethany, I'll have to go into CADWorks and dig a little deeper and figure out how that design was created. Mike asks, what material is the Royals hockey behind you? This is one of our other special effect heat transfer vinyls. This is our pattern heat transfer vinyl. So we offer patterns in fades and in ombre. So all you have to do is go onto our pattern section in our CAD cut heat transfer vinyl on the website and uh, go through our fades and work with what other colors um, you are interested in getting that fade in. Yes, Alexis, you can draw on it. I had a lot of fun with this this morning, <laughs> obviously. All right, and Lisa asks, how easy does it wipe off? Okay, so all you need is a, wa a wet washcloth or a, a paper towel and it wipes right off. Just as long as it's wet, you'll be able to rinse that right off. Um, and then to keep in mind, there are um, some items out there that are known as chalk pens. 
Um, this is not compatible with this product because of the chemical base that is in the heat transfer vinyl. So this is just for chalk only, no chalk pens or anything that it has a liquid. So do keep that in mind. This is just gonna work with your standard sidewalk chalk or chalkboard chalk, all right? All right. All right, that completes today's broadcast. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to comment those in. We will revisit the broadcast. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining me. We will see you on Monday morning for the morning show.